Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a beautiful and inspiring day and I hope that all of you are really, really enjoying your holiday season. Whether you are on some kind of break or are still working, I hope that you are really taking everything in and enjoying yourself and being surrounded by positive vibes, positive people, people you love, friends, family, and all of that good stuff. Personally, I work a lot and I'm sure lots of you can probably identify with this, but I really need to remind myself to enjoy my life and go live those experiences because it's really those moments that we have with other people that not only make life worth it, but are also going to inspire us to keep creating amazing and meaningful art. And I also feel that this is a very important time of the year in which we should take a moment to be by ourselves and reflect on the things that we succeeded at, things that we want to improve, visualize that better version of ourselves that we would like to become. Perhaps visualize the growth and the life that we want to be living a year from now so that we can set those goals intentionally and with true purpose. I actually wrote a blog post a while back in which I share how I create my own personal, interpersonal, and professional goals for myself. All of these areas are important and in that blog post I share how I set my yearly goals and then break those bigger goals apart into monthly goals and weekly objectives. I'm gonna make sure to leave a link to that blog post down below in the description box in case you're interested in going to check it out. But anyway, you guys, in this video, you're seeing my process for a watercolor pencil illustration of food. A couple of weeks ago, I shared another watercolor pencil piece that was a yellow rose. And as I was mentioning in that video, lots of you seem interested in this medium. So I am warming up to this medium once again after not having used it for quite a while. And I'm already planning more videos and tutorials on this, so do make sure to stay tuned. The idea for this piece basically came from an old watercolor painting that I created around three or four years ago. And the reason I thought of doing this is because I wanted to compare both the working process as well as a final outcome that I was able to experience and produce using these two different mediums. I do feel that this process was very enlightening and provided some solid facts, some solid proof for me to work from for future tutorials. Make sure to stick through until the end of this video because I'm going to show you both pieces side by side so that you can see the differences. So when I was working on my last watercolor pencil video, the one with the yellow rose, I was definitely starting to think that this particular watercolor pencil set that I have right now isn't all that great. And as I was working on this piece, which definitely required a larger variety of colors and that last uh, watercolor pencil rose piece, I definitely did come to a conclusion that this watercolor pencil set isn't very good in terms of quality. Throughout the process, I felt like I was fighting against them a bit. Um, I also thought that the colors weren't that bright. And though I do enjoy working in layers, I feel that I had to layer way too much in order to create the contrast and the level of three-dimensionality that I wanted to develop. So I'm not really gonna mention this brand of watercolor pencils that I am using. I'm definitely not gonna recommend it at all. And I am thinking on investing in a better watercolor pencil set, definitely a smaller one with less colors, but with quality pigment in them. So before talking a little bit about my process for this piece and leaving you to enjoy the rest of this time lapse before coming back to compare my watercolor version of this piece versus my watercolor pencil version, I want to take a quick second to welcome all you new people just visiting my channel today for the very first time. I am super happy you're here and do consider subscribing because every single week I share new videos with art tips, drawing and painting tutorials, and encouragement for aspiring artists. And if you do subscribe, don't forget to click on that little notification bell so that YouTube can let you know whenever I publish a new video, otherwise you may or may not find out about it. And I also wanna send out a humongous thank you to everyone that has joined my innermost community over on Patreon. Thank you so much, Howard, Jenna, Sharon, Peggy, Kelsey, Jackie, Ian, Frank, Destiny, Chris, Angie, Andrea, Valerie, Suzanne, Stephanie, Charlotte, 
Mary, Linda, Jane, and Avit. It's because of you that I am able to buy more art supplies and create more videos and tutorials for everyone to enjoy. And it's also because of you that I'm able to teach one less class locally each week so that I'm able to create these videos. So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And if any of you guys here on YouTube are interested in checking out all of the exclusive content that I am sharing over on Patreon, do make sure to check out the link to my Patreon site down below in the description box. All right, you guys, so in terms of the process that I basically went through in order to complete this piece, I started out with a freehand preliminary pencil sketch using an HB pencil. I then had a good look at my reference picture and I pre-selected the colors that I would be using for each area of my painting. Because I did want to create a certain level of realism and three-dimensionality in my piece, I also gave thought to color variation as well as what colors I would be mixing together to develop a variety in values throughout my piece. So just as an example for the yolk of the egg, I wanted to make sure that I had on hand a brighter yellow, a darker yellow, an orange, and even a darker reddish brownish color so that I would be able to develop a sense of three-dimensional form in this area. As I was selecting my colors, I actually did little swatches on a scrap piece of watercolor paper. And of course, with the development of a sensation of three-dimensional form also comes the illusion of highlights. And as many of you probably are already aware, when it comes to working with watercolor, it's good to protect the whites since the beginning. And because I know that this is so, so important and I didn't want to add in any other medium at the end to create those highlights, I did make sure to have a good look at my reference picture and have a good idea of where my lightest lights or my highlights would be located since before even bringing in any color at all. So in terms of the application of my color, after having completed my preliminary pencil sketch, I started using my watercolor pencils directly on my watercolor paper, which by the way, I am using Arches Cold Press 140 pound watercolor paper for this piece. And I started layering my colors together, constantly looking at my reference picture in order to get clues, just as if I were using regular colored pencils. Once I had a good amount of color on my paper, I went in with a clean and slightly dampened watercolor paintbrush. And I quite simply went in with very gentle scribbling movements or a broader brush strokes, depending on the area that I was painting and the texture that I wanted to start developing. As I was mentioning in my last watercolor pencil video. This medium is very versatile and it's very interesting. It allows us to create smooth, more painterly-like effects and create more of a colored pencil texture in other areas. So I was already starting to think of how I could use these different effects to my advantage in this particular piece. What areas I wanted more smoothed out and perhaps what areas I wanted to leave more texture in. So after that initial layer, it was just a matter of continuing to develop those values, continuing to develop that variation in color and creating that sensation of contrast by staying patient and adding more and more layers. Now, something important here, and this is also something that I mentioned in my last watercolor pencil video is, if you notice, I am jumping around from space to space because I am allowing my previous layer of paint and water to dry completely before attempting to go back in and further darken or add details. By having worked with regular watercolors for years now, I am used to doing this because wet paper is fragile paper and we definitely want to stay away from overworking it or damaging it. So I am very much used to jumping on to different areas so that I can continue with my painting while I allow the previous area to dry completely. And though generally speaking, we do tend to work with a less amount of water when we're working with watercolor pencils, when we compare it to working with regular watercolor paint, I do find keeping this in mind very useful because of the pointy, sharp, and perhaps even more abrasive nature of the watercolor pencil when compared to the bristles of a paintbrush. I definitely don't want to scratch or damage my watercolor paper with the point of my watercolor pencil. And this is also a reason why I would much rather work in layers 
and develop those darker values incrementally, making sure that I am applying the pigment very gently on my watercolor paper with each and every layer. Near the end, I definitely started pressing down a little bit harder, but I hope that I'm not able to do this as much once I have acquired a better watercolor pencil set. Okay, you guys, so let's go ahead and compare this finished piece to my regular watercolor piece. Okay, you guys, so here are both pieces side by side. Now, take into account that the watercolor painting to the left was created quite a few years ago. So I would like to believe that my watercolor painting skills and my art skills in general have improved somewhat since then. And of course, also take into account that the preliminary pencil sketch that I created to start both of these pieces was created completely freehand. And because I didn't trace at all and it wasn't really my intention, to have my piece look completely 100% like the photograph, the shape, size, and location of certain things might look a bit different. The final piece of information to take into account is that these pieces were created in different types of watercolor paper. I may be mistaken, but I believe that the first piece was created on very cheap Canson Excel watercolor paper while the second one was created on much higher quality Arches watercolor paper. This said, though the watercolor paint that I used for the first piece was definitely student grade quality, I would say that it's much better in terms of pigment quality than these watercolor pencils that I used for the second piece. So of course, as you can see, there are many different variables that affected the overall outcome. However, I would say that in terms of the process and the overall outcome, these two mediums are definitely different. And just to name a couple of things, watercolor pencils definitely provide much more control and are easier to clean up than regular watercolor paint. And as you can see, they also very easily allow us to create both softened painterly effects as well as more colored pencil-like textures. And if we zoom into this watercolor piece, we definitely notice more vivid, brighter colors because the pigment quality is better. And generally speaking, we notice a looser, more painterly style. And of course, you can achieve very, very high levels of realism using watercolor. But for both of these pieces, I did want to make sure that I was keeping things as simple as possible and didn't want to take that much longer in one piece than the other so that I could more easily compare the two. So what do you guys think? What differences do you notice between these two pieces and which appeals to you most? I would love, love, love to hear from you down below in the comment section. And if you actually have some experience using both of these mediums, let us know which one you personally like most and why. And finally, if you have any watercolor pencil suggestions for me to buy, do let me know because I'm super interested in that as well. Okay, everyone, that is it for today. I really hope that you enjoyed this video, that you found it helpful and inspiring. I'm gonna leave a few videos for you to check out right here. If you like this video, I would really, really appreciate a thumbs up because it really helps my channel out. Don't forget to subscribe and see you soon for another video. Bye guys.